Every academic subject begins by defining itself, and for good reason. A definition is an explanation of the meaning of a word or a phrase, and if we don't define our words adequately, we won't really know what we're talking about. So it's good to define things at the beginning. Logic may be defined as the systematic study of reasoning. But what is reasoning? You reason when you conclude something on the basis of something else. In other words, when you draw a conclusion on the basis of some evidence. For example, I hear the cat meowing and I conclude he's probably hungry. I see, I see dark clouds rolling in and I conclude it's probably going to rain. Mark, can I use you as a prop on this? So here is my colleague Mark Story. And let's imagine that Joe Blow is running for president. And I see Mark here and imagine that he's got buttons, Joe Blow for president buttons all over him. And I see that and I conclude that Mark's probably supporting Joe Blow for president. I mean, that would be an example of reasoning. And so logic is the systematic study of reasoning. Now, I want to take a moment and, exp and put in here something. We're at the Edmonds waterfront in Edmonds, Washington. And you may have noticed that there's some kind of a marine theme going on in these early lectures marine theme, which is appropriate because, as you know from uh, the course materials, the founder of logic is the Greek philosopher Aristotle, who lived from 384 BC to 322 BC. And Aristotle is not only uh, the founder of logic, he's also the founder of marine biology. The first, Aristotle was the first person to systematically study sea life on a scientific basis, and so he's considered the founder of marine biology. And so this marine theme is a little bit appropriate to the founder of our discipline. So thanks, Mark, for being my prop. Okay. So we've defined logic as the systematic study of reasoning. And reasoning is what you do when you conclude something on the basis of something else. In an act of reasoning, the mind moves. It moves from evidence to a conclusion based on that evidence. Well, that's the subject matter of logic. But thoughts in your mind aren't tangible enough to be what we study in, in an academic subject such as logic. If we're going to study reasoning, we need to some, study something that we can get our hands on something that's tangible, something that we can all look at and analyze together. When reasoning is put into words, the result is called an argument. So an argument in logic is reasoning that's been put into words. In academic subjects, generally the word argument means reasoning put into words. Now you may have used the word argument in other contexts, to refer to people yelling at each other, screaming at each other, having verbal or angry disputes. But in academic contexts generally, and in logic especially, the word argument just means reasoning that's been put into words. Now once reasoning's been put into words, we have something tangible enough to be an object of study. And so sometimes you'll see logic defined as the study of argument or the study of argumentation. It's with the concept of an argument that logic really begins. Because when reasoning's been put into words and we have an argument in front of us, we have something tangible enough to get our hands on and to be an object of study. So what is an argument? I've defined it as reasoning put into words. But we can define it in more detail if we think about it. An argument will have two parts. It will have a conclusion that's being drawn, and it will have evidence that's offered in support of the conclusion. 